Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are Going In Raw. What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, the legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, friend, oh, Steve here. And Larson. And hey, welcome to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. And anywhere fine podcasts are available, be sure to hit that subscribe button, either if you're on the YouTube, which has that little bell notify thing, and it's also yeah on the uh, podcast apps out there. I'm sure you can hit subscribe or download or whatever. It automatically puts it on your phone, and it's great. And if you did that a while ago and all you do is watch on YouTube, go back into that phone and hit refresh on that feed because it'll probably start downloading crap to your phone again. You can just delete the old ones and re-up the new ones. It jacks us up in the ratings. Everybody wins, Larson. When's the last time you checked said ratings? Oh, I don't know, dude. It, it, you told me things have been about a week ago. Since like there's like everybody does a podcast now. So back when back when we were like semi regularly in the 50s and 40s and 60s and then we were like always around the 90 mark. There were probably half the podcasts in the sports and rec category than there are now. Yeah. And like you just said everybody has a podcast. Burgeoning industry. Like back then Jericho was like consistently top 10, now he's maybe consistently top like, he's maybe in the 90s. Like, Jericho has fallen to where we were. Wow. So you can imagine how for, like, Colt Cabana, see him so in what the is, hundreds. Uh, what's towards the top of the rankings these days? Oh, dude, I, every like, every ESPN personality, it's ridiculous. Oh, like, yeah. everybody in that category here. Let's take a look at some. We're also on the Patreon at Patreon. Oh, 30 for 30 has their, their number one. Oh, yeah, I want to check their stuff out. Makes sense. Um, we're also on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. We have got 57 or 56 people watching right now the live stream of this. And they heard us talking about our favorite movie comedic moments uh, prior to All us going live here. Comedic movies in general. Yeah. I'm trying to think of some more that aren't like obvious choices because I know they're out there. Um, let's see here. I'm looking at some of these podcasts, right? Fantasy, fo- fantasy football is going to be coming up right oh, now. Yeah. Did you join the fantasy football? League? I'm going to. I'm going to join the Discord Club Fantasy Football League tonight. And if I don't do it tonight, someone remind me again. I'm sorry. I meant to do it last night. I got busy watching SmackDown. Got just so wrapped up in a riveting show yeah. that I forgot to do it. There's so many ESPN ones, dude. All right. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but anyways, over there on the Patreon, we have a bevy of reward tiers ranging from $1 a month all the way up to $200,000 a month. I don't think anybody's actually cashed in on that $200,000 one, but let no. me check. Oh, too sweet. No, Hamza Come Halal. Come on, good brother. No, Hamza Halal says here in uh, chat for the stream, you guys should start a movie TV show podcast. I don't have the time to watch movies or TV shows like I used to. We already have a lot of podcasts. On, but I do. podcast is on a daily basis. No, but later on, uh, who says this? We have like a lot of 10 for the wins. You can still Hamza check Halal. out. Hamza Halal. Oh, sorry. I didn't scroll down all the way. Oh, no. Uh, oh, Dami Ray says they should do a bonus podcast about movies or music. Um, when there's no uh, pay per view or a slow week, I feel like we do, hey, I'll, I'll we'll do this. What? I'll invite you onto my channel, youtube.com forward slash mf steve here, and we can do it there. This is a wrestling channel. Remember, we got to focus, Larson. We got to focus. Is there a way we can cross things over? We got to focus. There's always a way. MF Steve and Larson? No. <laughs> what do you mean? Wrestling and. Pop culture type stuff. I don't know, man. I've got enough. Because I enjoy about talking about movie comedies. Yeah, no, me, t- me too. But that's what. Look, man, at the five dollar Patreon mark, you can hear us talk about that three days a week. Yeah, for like ten minutes though. Yeah, but people it's want good. a full hour of us trying to think of the funniest movie moments and being stumped because our, mem- our memories suck now because we're old. Uh, look, there's plenty of ten for the wins out there. Where we talk about our favorite movie moments, be it yeah, sci-fi, but it's like comedy. Thirty seconds per entry. We don't really get that into it. Yeah, I'm uh, just putting that, that that the idea in your mind. It's something different, something to 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 you know, like after a long week of talking about wrestling, sometimes it's possible to get a little burnt out. Absolutely. So it's something to to 
take our mind off wrestling, talk about something else. Like, man, come on over to my channel, MF Steve here. Because you and I doing something together should be on our channel. How about this? New channel. Done. Won't have to worry about that YouTube wrestling stuff. True. We'll do gaming, movies. No, no, gaming. TV. No, no gaming. No gaming. No gaming? We tried that before. It didn't work. No gaming. Me and Lacey played Heavy Rain, and we had a blast. Good for you. Continue I having fun. Some gaming could be possible. I don't want to do gaming on us. I want to talk about things that really interest us. You know where we got these shirts from? ProWrestlingTees.com. Yeah. However, if you go to ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash going in raw... We've got a bevy of designs there based on us. I, I went crazy on the design. I'm, I'm doing more designs. I was doing them this morning, man. Yeah, okay. the one you showed me was good. <laughs> you like this one That's here? perfect. This, this that is, one's this, good. This is a good one. But I like my note I added. Oh, uh, yeah, send yeah, me that like picture. Send me too. that picture. All right, I'll send you no, that. No, no, no. I'm doing now, that shirt. I get, we got to retake this picture. Okay, but I'm doing that shirt. You're not touching that one. I can't do that one? Nope. All right. This is not a shirt. That's like a 10 by 10 pixel. Yes. What about that oh, one? That's good. <laughs> It's got to be on that color. Can shirt we too. do? Can we do like a a, a bunch of pink and green? Oh yeah, like absolutely. the heart, like the heart on eggs, but our own stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had an idea for that too, and I forgot it. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, you can probably tell we're procrastinating and talking about SmackDown because, oh boy, what a snooze fest! Can we just fast forward to talking about yeah. two or five live because that was yeah that was that really good two show. out of three falls match spectacular. I don't know why that wasn't the main event. Was yeah right? That was off the hook. Who were you rooting for by the end of that match? Because I was rooting for Drew Gulak. I kind of was too, but I really like Mustafa Ali. That I character really like moment, him. that character moment of him on top of the turnbuckle. We'll save that for that show because there's a lot for us to talk about there. Sounds Let's good. Let's save that. All right. We all have right. to talk about SmackDown. All We're right. obligated to do so. All That's right. what I mean. Burnout can be all a problem. We have all to right. talk about stuff that we may not have enjoyed totally. But you told me that SmackDown wasn't very good. I texted you last night. I said, I'm pretty sure I said it was garbage. You did say it was garbage. Yeah. Um, so I went into it with low expectations, and I wasn't as uh, upset about it or disappointed by it as you were, I don't think, because I wasn't expecting much. There okay. were two pretty good matches. Unfortunately, they were both interrupted by commercial breaks. Well, there were three pretty good matches. Well, I thought the Canela Sami Zayn one was an okay match. It was better because of the character work as opposed to the quality yeah, I know, of the rest. Well, that's what I liked about it. I like the Canellas. I like them. I like my. I like seeing Mike Bennett. He looks excited. Maria Canellas looks excited. It looks like they have characters that they can really chew on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I really like that. And I think Sami Zayn is the is the perfect first opponent for them. Yeah, I think that's really good. But let's start at the beginning. This, I thought, was a segment that lasted, I think, 15 minutes. And, man, I, I just wanted to fall asleep. It was it, So, Jinder comes out. They have the Punjabi prison, which it's actually very impressive yeah. that they're able to set it up or at least take it down. Yeah. Like, with such, you know. Did they just raise it back up? Is that yeah. what? Okay, they just raised it back up. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was hanging over the ring the rest of the match. Okay, okay. Didn't really notice that. Um, anyway, actually oh, uh, threw out 205 Live as well. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't. I didn't look. I didn't look at the top of my TV. I guess. Uh, so, anyways, Jinder Mahal and the Singh brothers come out uh, and they deliver a promo about the Punjabi prison. The Singh brothers uh, explain the rules of the match, which is probably a good idea because I don't think they've had a Punjabi prison match in how Since long? Two thousand seven. Yeah, ten years. Ten years. Yeah. So you know they they want to show off the structure. They want to explain the rules. Mm -hmm. All good ideas, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Setting everything up for Sunday. By the way, we're going to live stream my reactions, right, for Battleground? Yeah, yeah. Programming note. Uh, we're going to be, like you just said, live streaming our reactions on Stephen Larson. It's going to be us, the couch. At no point will Maybe we ever... food. Yeah. At no point will we ever turn the camera towards the uh, TV. You can get the WWE Network for a mere nine... You can get it for free. You can get a free trial. Do they do that? Yeah. Okay. They spoke about it last night during SmackDown. Is it always free trial or is it like it, I think if you've never signed up before, oh, you can get okay. for, uh, 30 days for free. There you go. And I'm sure there's plenty of illegal ways online to get it, but going to our channel ain't one of them. Let me ask you this real quick. Food for Sunday. A, are you going to save your cheat day for Sunday? Because I am. B, what are we eating? <laughs> cheat day. You know what I had for breakfast this morning? Mm. Uh, Eggos. <laughs> that sounds good. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, no, back, like after that, but I, I that Eggos was like my last until Sunday. I, I, I can have something, but I'm not going to have like, I don't know, like eating gross doesn't appeal to me right now because I've kind of been eating gross ever since my surgery mm. because I can't lift things. Yes. And now I'm almost on the verge of being able to lift things. Like I'm going to go for a jog today when you leave. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, Sunday, I don't know. What, what are you thinking? Well, I did Del Taco last time. Yeah. I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. Nothing sounds good anymore. Think about it. I'm over food. You're not going to eat anymore? I'm not going to eat anymore. Aren't there, like, pills or something I can just take? No. That'll give me nutrients? No. No? You have to at least drink something. Yeah, well, water, sure. No, I mean, to get nutrients. There's no nutrients in water. Really? No. It's just water. I like my stickers. They're okay. Um, you need, like, Ensure or something like that. 
Anyways, uh, that. anyways, we'll think about it. We'll talk about it later. They explain the rules. Randy Orton comes down. He had one good line. He said something like, when your jacked up ass is, is laying on the ground and I won and he's up on the top. I mean, I get, it was a cool visual, him climbing up the... <laughs> credit to Orton for the, like... The, the the outer part of the Punjabi prison during his promo. Yeah, man. I mean, the dude And then climbed, sat on the top of it for the last part of his promo. That was cool. And he wasn't like, you know, freaked out or anything. No. I would have been really freaked. Like, two steps up and I've been like... Oh, Oh, I know. I can't stand heights. So I, I wouldn't even Screw done it. Screw this. I'm done with this. I, I wouldn't even consider that promo. I wouldn't even done the match because I don't like heights. Yeah, I'm not huge on that either. Uh, but anyways, yeah, Randy Orton, he comes out. He cuts a promo. Um, I mean, it was, a, it was a relatively effective promo. I just, dude, I like action. I just felt there was a lot of talking. It was probably not the best way to open the show. No. This should have started the second hour. Or, like, if this, if this segment, sorry, somehow culminated with... Um, Violence of some sort, then have it end the show. You yeah. know? Yeah, agreed. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I thought it was, I like action. I don't like words, man, unless they're really good. And the promos in this episode, especially the Cena one, which is freaking, I don't like using the word offensive, but I was really off put by it. It's a wrestling match, John Cena. Yeah. You I know? know, it's I a know. wrestling match. I know. Uh, anyways, uh, next up, we had a pretty decent match. Jimmy Uso took on Kofi Kingston in singles Yeah, I action. really enjoyed this. Um, unfortunately, a good chunk of the middle of the match was interrupted by a commercial break. Granted, they do the picture-in-picture thing. Yeah. But still, the commercial that's playing dominates the frame. They feel... So you really, yeah. have, you really have to pay attention to, to concentrate on the action that's going on. Because it's they, really, really, really easy to get distracted by the commercial playing. Because that's the audio you hear. They feel like the picture in picture lets them do like whatever they want. They feel like that's totally fine and they can play things exactly like they would play if it was full screen. Oh, and no, they you can't, can't do that. They can't do that. Can't do that. Like you can't do you can't have the majority of the action take place during a commercial break. No, and that happened probably with the two best matches of the night. I would love for that picture in picture just to be milling about. Because I'm a big fan of watching. Yeah, for a while that's what they did. About. Yeah, when they I know. first started doing it, it was milling about, and that was at least then you can do some character stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like if there's something even comedic going on, I'll be fine with it. Because sometimes they do comedic starts to matches, you know. No, they should open the show with the uh, the tag match that was the main event. Yeah, I know. I probably would have been better. With, I probably would have been a little since it was since they announced it before the show. There was no build to it during the actual show, and that's, yeah, what, that's how they should open the show. I know, but I'm just I'm over that like I was fine with that sort of the singles going into tag matches when Smackdown was first starting to do it when Nakamura came out or when he was finished with the Dolph thing and, and like I think didn't they do one they did one with Cena I think I don't know it was just yeah Cena and AJ did one was it like last week was that last week they did Cena AJ mm-hmm. yeah I think so they, they've just been doing too much of that, dude. Yeah, they have. Uh, next up, Shane was... Well, hold on. Uh, co- the, the oh, finish match, the match. Yeah. Kofi uh, hits a, a, a splash off the top rope on Jimmy Uso. Jimmy rolls through. For the pin. The yeah, pin. got the pin there. They've been doing a really good job of having all these singles matches between the Usos and the New Day. They've all been pretty entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shane, oh, we're going to do... So, by the way, also our predictions... Because Battleground is coming up this Sunday. Our yes. predictions will once again be a part of it'll our... be an episode of Countout. be an episode of Countout. The last one did really well. It did. People responded to it well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, then we had Shane, who uh, just today actually survived a helicopter crash. Yeah. Big, up, no big worse, ups to Shane. No worse for wear. He was able to be... He did a TV interview yeah. on the spot, yeah. on the scene. Yeah, yeah. Apparently the helicopter uh, crash landed in some water. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, mama mia. Uh, so Shane, uh, pre-helicopter accident, was backstage with Tamina, Lana, Natalia, Charlotte, and Becky, a.k.a. all the participants in the elimination match coming up at Battleground yes. for the number one contendership. Um, they're all arguing over who they're all arguing over who gets to fight Lana. And then Tamina steps in and says, nobody's fighting Lana. And then Shane finally says, Becky and Charlotte, you guys are going to fight. And Charlotte's like, Nobody wants to see that because I've already beat you so many times. Uh, well, because Natalia suggested it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, and Becky's like, whoa, hold on a second, buddy boy. And then Shane said, that's the match that's going to happen later tonight. Yeah. So that happened. And also a very good match. Also interrupted by commercial break. Uh, Chad Gable had a chance to sit down with uh, Renee Young after that. He did a that. reaction video. He did, exactly, yeah. Um, where he got to talk about uh, uh, Jason Jordan angle. Yeah. And uh, I, I was sad this was not handled on smocking on sm- talking smack. Yeah, 
Obviously, it's canceled now, the weekly version of it. Um, this felt a little too scripted. I know. That's why. That's exactly why I didn't like it. Um, Chad Gable, I think, is probably a really good improviser. Yes. Improviser. And, uh, and yeah, something scripted, it just it falls flat. Yep. For a guy like him, I think that dude's got a, a boatload of charisma. Yep. But you don't, you don't need scripted stuff with him. Uh, next up, we finally had the in-ring debut of Mike, Mike Canellis. Canellis, uh, and he took on Sami Zayn. Um, Mike Canellis looks very, very happy to be there. Yeah, uh, he's got a lot of energy. The dude's got a lot of charisma. He's got some great tights. He's got some. <laughs> those are so bad, dude. That's what makes them great. I know they they look like he made them. I know it, it looks like he made them and then showed them to Marie, and she very condescendingly said, "That's good, honey." Um. His jacket's great. Yeah, his jacket's really good. I, I like the whole thing. I like them as a, I like them as a as an act. I think they're very well realized, and that's always fun. Um, and I think Sami Zayn is a really good first opponent for them. Uh, him and Mike Canellis. I thought they put on a pretty good match. Yeah, uh, Sammy dominated for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, hit the exploder into the corner, and then Maria gets in the ring. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, between Sammy and Mike, mm-hmm. um, giving Mike an opportunity to recuperate. Yeah. Um, she gets out of the way. Mike Canellis hits his finisher, which I guess is a Samoan driver that JBL called the power of love. Yeah. It was good. That was really good. Hell of a move, too. Yeah. kind of. I was actually kind of surprised they let him do that. They don't let anybody else do. Well, it's kind of like a Mishinoku driver, but he puts him up in the, the Samoan drop position. Yeah. First. Yeah. How many people? Who else does the Mishinoku driver? Uh, Natalia does. Um, I feel like Sami Zayn has done some variation. Yeah, on he did. they let him do a driver. They don't let everybody do driver. But a Mishinoku driver, you just tuck the their you head. Just, yeah, you and keep, they land you keep, on their shoulders. You sort of you cradle them. Yeah, yeah, you cradle them. It's not like they're. It's not like the inverted Hurricane Rana we saw in two hundred five live. Oh man, how is Drew Gulak not? We'll get to that tomorrow. Wow, that was intense. Whew. Uh Next up, we had John Cena's Yay USA promo. I hate this shit, dude. I ab- I hate this shit. Remember at WrestleMania 31, they did that video package before the match started. That was like the video equivalent of this. <laughs> did they show the towers? I think so. Oh, God. Okay, here's the thing, dude. Like I'm, I, I, I like our country. I love our country. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. Like, I, have, I, I consider myself lucky to have been born in the country I'm in, in the state I'm in. Uh, you know, I think America does a lot of great things. I think, you know, like any country, like any empire, like any human being, you take the good and the bad, you know, but I'm, I'm fine with, you know, I, but when you talk about Pearl Harbor and then they go into close up for when he says, and when the towers fell, the flag still stood or was still was raised or some shit like that. It's a fucking wrestling match. You do not invoke Pearl Harbor and 9-11 when you're promoting a wrestling match, a predetermined wrestling match. You don't do that. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> like, oh, I, I, could, I can't stand that shit, man. I can't stand that stuff. Yeah. And on top of that, it's not even, I mean, it, it is that. That is one aspect of it. But number two, it was just a boring promo. It really was. I do, and I know you're on you're on board with this. John Cena is like a once in a generation promo guy. Yeah, he's really good. He can have that crowd in the palm really of his good. hands. He yeah. can be amazing. But when he gets when he gets up on his little soapbox and yay, 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 it's it's the most boring shit you'll ever hear in your life. Yeah. It's so boring. And it doesn't do anything. And then, of course, Rusev comes out and he attacks. And I'm just thinking, man, it'd be great if Rusev won this match. But he's not going to. Like, this is talk about a lock. Yeah. Talk about an absolute lock. I just, I can't stand that stuff, man. When he starts talking about the towers, man, I remember watching that shit. Yeah, me you know? too. Me too. Like, that was a, that was a sucker punch to the entire country. Mm-hmm. And you're talking about it prom- promoting a wrestling match? I know. Get out of here with that shit, man. I can't stand that. But anyways, he did his thing. I mean, it's, it, the, the close up on him when he says when the towers fuck, get out of here. I know. Anyways, yeah. that that really I, my my freaking eyes are rolling in the back. Of, I was looking at my brain, dude. It was horrible. <laughs> like my eyes rolled back so far. It's so annoying. Anyways, uh, 
Next. Hey, next up, we had AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura backstage. This was cool. Yeah. Anytime so, these guys are on the screen. Yeah, so Nakamura out. comes into frame. AJ says, hey, you want to talk strategy for our, our match tonight? Yeah. Uh, Nakamura shakes his head. Mm -hmm. And then uh, AJ says, no, nah, that's fine. We don't need to. We, he starts reminiscing about Japan. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Shinsuke points to the title and says, uh, next time you call, I answer. Yeah, Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the open challenge. Yeah. Oh, brr, brr. oh man. Let me ask you, do you think we're going to get an AJ open challenge at uh, SummerSlam? That'd be cool. I don't know if they would. You know, I would love to think so, but how, how do you hype that? You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you really hype that? Unless the, he does like some high profile open challenges leading up to it. But I feel like if you're going to do a SummerSlam match, you have to sort of. Oh, I'm assuming they're going to build to it. They're going to build to it. Um, but it would be rad to see an open challenge on that stage. Uh, let's see here. Next we had uh, Charlotte versus Becky Lynch. Another pretty good match. This was a good match. I really enjoyed this. Natalia did commentary on it. Um, and I really like that uh, that Becky Lynch went over, man, with the disarmor. I thought the finishing sequence was oh, really, really great, well done. The whole match was great. Yeah, it was, there was really, a lot of really good chain wrestling. It was really fast paced. Charlotte was really giving it her all in mm -hmm. terms of like the selling and stuff because – like they're best friends. I know. It's like it's like, man, I'm gonna make my best friend look like a million I know. bucks and, right now. And they did a lot of really intricate stuff. Yeah. And it was all pretty smooth, pretty yeah. clean. Um, the finish saw Charlotte missing a moonsault. Um, Becky puts her in the disarmor. Charlotte mm -hmm. kind of gets to the ropes briefly, and then Becky transitions, gets him back in the middle of the ring. Charlotte tries to reverse, can't. Eventually, right, has to right, tap right. out. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah, it was good stuff. Um. Yeah, Tamina and Lana come down at one point, and then uh, Natalia attacks at the end of the match. And then everybody starts brawling because Charlotte gets up and she's like, you know, she's like, "You beat me," and then she's gonna raise her hand or she. Yeah, they shake hands. They shake their little tea thing. Yeah, their little tea thing. Their tea sweet. Um, and then, but yeah, that just descends into chaos. And then I think uh, Tamina is the one that stands tall. Tamina and Lana. Yeah, they're they're the only two left in the ring, so neither of them are winning at Battle I don't know, man. That's the one match I have. I'm having a really hard time calling. I think I think the two people who stood tall. I think I think I don't know, man. I think Lana might be winning that thing because her. And then yeah, and then I don't know. When, when is Carmella going to cash in? I know. I mean, I I totally think that Carmella is going to cash in at SummerSlam. Could be. I really do. It'd be kind of interesting if she cashed in and lost at SummerSlam. God. You want to freaking ignite Naomi like crazy? She's already over, dude. Oh, yeah. They have done such a masterful job. And not just they, but Naomi, too. Mm -hmm. They have done a great job of making her a legitimate champion. Yeah. And it's all the little things. Nothing's too overblown. She's winning matches she should win. She's selling good. She's getting better in the ring. And that belt looks spectacular. And her character work is really good. Yeah. And the belt. Like, she owns it. She yeah. owns everything about yeah. it. It's great. Um, speaking of Naomi, she had an interview with was it Dasha? I think so. Um, that was interrupted by Carmella. Yeah, and Carmella was just reminding her, "Hey, I'm here, cash in, ready to cash in in a time." Yeah. After that, Fashion X Files. <laughs> so Tyler Breeze was Scully, and uh, and uh, Ch Cheddarfield was Mulder. Yeah, and uh, Moldengo. Yeah, Tyler Breeze. Uh, I don't know if he just kind of dyed his hair red or had a wig. I think it was a wig. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Probably. a wig. Um, but anyways, they were talking about it. Again, they had a great wall with all sorts of great new jokes on it. And uh, they were talking about who this is going to be. And then uh, they, they had a package delivered, and they thought it was an alien because the light above them went on. Mm -hmm. But just the delivery person had turned the light on to see in their office. Right. And then they bring he brings the box in. They sign for it, put it down. They uh, they reference seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah, in the box good, scene? Yeah, yeah. And it's the the head of of Fandango's. What do you call those? Uh, a little stick horse. Yeah. What do you but name I, it? I forget what he named it though. Like was it? I forget what it was. It was a Tully. I think it was Tully. Tully. Yeah. <laughs> Tully. <laughs> um, and so it's the head of, of, of his horse yeah. in the box yeah. with a note that said Battleground. And then it said, yeah, it's going to be two. And then like the they said he was talking about aliens or something. And then there's, oh, that was a delivery guy. Um, yeah, so it said to be concluded at Battleground. We're going to find out who this is. So what better opportunity than do some power rankings? All right, power who rankings. will be the Fashion Police's opponent at Battleground? Two. Three, four, five. All right. 
Um, number one, it's the club. It's the club. Zero reason for them. A, Jason Jordan went to the Raw. And so even though I don't think it's the case, I don't think it needs to be. I don't think anybody needs to be shipped over from Raw to SmackDown. They might use it as justification or they might not. I don't think they anybody needs to be moved from Raw to SmackDown, but SmackDown needs another tag team. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, They need another tag they team. Need, the the yeah. Colognes are out of action because one of them's hurt. Yeah, uh, American Alpha just broke up. So you're left with New Day, uh, The Ascension, The Usos, and the Fashion Police. You so, have four tag yeah, teams. Yeah, so really you're just left with the New Day, Usos, and the uh, Fashion, Fashion Police. Police. Um, the club are so the club revival and Seamus and Cesaro all serve the exact same function. Yes. And although the club are kind of involved in what's going on now, it that's been taken over by the revival and the Hardys. They're doing that thing. I think you're not going to have, you know, uh you're not going to have a fatal four way for the tag match for the tag straps again. I think you're going to see the club uh, move over to SmackDown and uh, and be, they're going to be the guys. Good they, choice because they, they it's like I said, there's just there's no need for them to be there anymore. No, you know. And the only bummer thing about that is the club are going to stay heels. AJ is going to stay a face, and they're going to do the thing where AJ just sort of disassociates with the club. Mm -hmm. That's a bummer to me. Yeah, I know. That's a bummer to me. But number two, that's what it's going to be sanity. Uh, yeah. Maybe you said this. Granted, before. I know uh, based on uh, what happened during the next NXT spo uh, set of tapings, I won't get into details, but they're involved in a storyline, a pretty yeah. major one. Yeah. Um, so that will probably preclude them from being involved. But I spent 10 minutes looking over the Raw and SmackDown tag division. And amongst those two divisions, the only ones, the only name that stuck out that has a potential possibility were the club. Okay. So. Let me, I think it's a club. Um, but the idea of it possibly being sanity. Um, is there anything in the, because I kind of remember the spoilers from the last set of tapings. Yeah. And I'm not going to spoil them here. Is there anything that would lead you to believe they wouldn't, they're going to, they're going to have a match as a tag team at takeover? Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. It is. Okay. Is it in stone? Um, no, I don't know. Okay. All right. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. Um, are there any other possibilities? War machine, but they're still IWGP heavyweight tag team champions, but <laughs> yeah. they are free agents. Yeah. No, nah, man. It's the club one through five. It's the club. It's gotta be the club. Let's well, keep anybody Sandy two and then, uh, three, four, five, make them the club. Terrence Thompson, whose unapologetic podcast is available right now. One of our friendos. He says he called the club months ago. Good job. Well Great done. job. Well done. Good reason to, to listen to his podcast. Yes. Um, let's I see don't know who else it would be. Anybody else here? Are there any huge uh, free agent tag teams out there? Redragon. Maybe Dragon again will show up. It's not going to be the Dragon. I know anymore. it's not because one half of that team hasn't even come, come on to anybody. Yet. Nobody else in chat here has. Maybe it's Adam Cole. Uh, it could be, yeah, just, just Adam just Cole. Just Adam Cole. Yeah, that'd be good. I like that. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's the Young Bucks. Yeah. It'd be the Young Bucks. They, WWE might have bought out their contract. They made a bought Ring of Honor. Yeah. They, <laughs> exactly. Oh, wait, the Young Bucks or WWE? Uh, they could be the Young Bucks. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> oh, man, it's the club, dude. It's gotta be the club. They're gonna be going to SmackDown. That's good. That's a good call. Yeah. Then we had our main event. It was AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kevin Owens and Baron Corbin. See, that's a bummer. This match wasn't actually uh, booked in organic fashion based on stories being told through the episode of SmackDown. It was announced in advance. Oh, it wouldn't have mattered. It was, uh, I'm tired of these things. You know what, man? When they do, do it once, I'll, I'll mark out for you. Do it twice, and I'll be like, hey, pretty cool. Do it like eight times, and I'm checked out. Do it basically every week? Yeah, do it every week, and I'm checked out, man. We've seen a lot of brawling. Let's break down these. We've seen a lot of brawling between Shinsuke Nakamura and Baron Corbin. I like the, you know, AJ Styles. We've got a title change, and we got to see Kevin Owens kind of respond to that. We've seen AJ Styles open challenge. But all that interesting stuff is a lot more interesting than just slapping together a tag match oh, like I this agree. with AJ I Styles. Agree. No, I know. All, Shins all we've had with Shinsuke and Baron Corbin really is a bunch of brawling. Yeah. You know, we haven't really had any much. I mean, 
This is the closest thing we've had to a match between the two of them. Yeah, I know. They were supposed to have a match a week or two ago, and they just brawled before it started. Like, there needs to be, like, uh, a variety of, of, of things that happen in a feud, and this yes. is just some, it's just brawling and beating each other up during interviews and stuff. Yeah. Nothing's really happening. No. Um, the match itself wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Corbin comes out and attacks Nakamura during uh, Shinsuke's uh, entrance. This is also one of those things where I just... When's the last time Baron and it could be could have been last week, I don't know. Mm-hmm. When's the last time Baron uh uh threatened or even teased or even like oh, a sig- cash in? signaled a cash in? I think the Tuesday after he won it. They they keep the storylines so in their own universes. Unless they're like ramshack unless they're like yeah, rammed together yeah, like yeah. in this and case. One of SmackDown's strengths generally is their ability to weave yeah, various right. storylines right. and make it feel natural. Like Raw, for example, we were joking, a lot of people got a kick out of it, and I did too. When we were joking about Roman coming out. And how great would it have been if, you know, you could have had that moment. You could have had yep. that moment, right? So he's huge now. He's even bigger doing that and then going into his main event against Samoa Joe. People yep. are like hot for it. Yeah. Then the Braun things, ha- the Braun thing happens, and that takes out any possibility of Roman really reuniting with the Shield like the next week, because then he legitimately can say, "I've got a lot on my plate right now." Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, hey, it's one thing to have, hey, I got a match later with Samoa Joe. That's one thing, but it's another thing to be destroyed by Braun Strowman, because then you can legitimately say, "Look, guys, I'm sorry, but this reunion is going to have to be." But everybody would understand. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it makes sense. Doesn't make sense for him not to come out and help the Shield. Agreed. Full sprint should have been Get full sprint. Ring. Get him out Who's there, the quick. Um, so, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, Corbin comes out, interrupts things. Everybody ends up brawling on the ramp. Mm-hmm. Faces get to the ring. He'll stay on the ramp. Commercial break. Come back. Match decent enough. Um, Kevin Owens ultimately gets the pin on AJ after a pop-up powerbomb. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned this off camera. The wrestling was decent. There was some good stuff going on. It's just I, 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 I see that. It's kind of like my reaction – to tag to 205 and I, I love 205 live but they're the tag matches they just sort of throw together on raw mm-hmm. there is no purpose to them and so i watch them and i'm like as soon as they as soon as i see them milling about the ring i'm like eh, i really not forgot team. to mention hype bro during the the tag team segment of the show as a tag team but they're not gonna be a tag team for much longer oh yeah no and they were kind of dismissed as a possibility yes. like two weeks ago uh so anyways um or last week anyways yeah, let's get to questions. I'm sure you guys have lots of questions. Over yes, here. I liked some of them on here, so we can reference them quickly and well easily. Done. Well done, well done, son. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Uh, La looking like a million bucks sombrero asks, why do you think WWE used the Punjabi prison tonight to build hype for the event? Because it seems like a colossal waste of money and time, even if the visual of Randy climbing it while delivering a promo was pretty cool. The last part of what you just said is why they did it, because the visual of Randy Orton climbing it is pretty cool. And it is a very intimidating looking thing. Yeah, and considering they haven't had one of these type of matches in 10 years, it's good to reacquaint people. Yeah, to reacquaint people with the structure, the rules. Yeah. Hype the match. No, I feel like it is, it is, I think the visual itself goes a, a long way towards selling mm-hmm. the event. Yes. I think it, I think yes. it's good. Gene the Grappler. Hello, friendo. So Chad Gable is a singles wrestler now. Yeah. You see him going to the top and chase for the WWE title, chase after the U.S. title, or jobber than future endeavored. Um, he has the talent to chase for the U.S. title within the next year. Over the next 12 months, yeah. Um, I would expect him to see him you know, wrestle in the mid card for a while. Yeah. Not that that really exists on SmackDown. Whoever takes the title off of AJ, boy, that might be a long time coming though. I was going to say, I'm not sure Chad Gable will be able to take it off of AJ primarily because they're both two faces, but I could see him sort of surprised taking it off the next heel mm-hmm. and really seeing if he can run with it. And I think he'd Kinda do a good job. Frame it as an underdog story. Yeah. 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 I, I could see that happening. Um, JT, hey friendo, has been watching 90s wrestling. One move Beautiful. I miss seeing is the test of strength. Oh, yeah. Um, is there an old school wrestling move that you would want to see wrestlers do today? Second row pile drivers. <laughs> That's, that is, uh, hold on. That is not 
an old school wrestling move. All right, pile drivers. <laughs> pile, I'd, lay, I'd love to see more pile drivers. You can see if you want to see pile drivers, you look anywhere but the WWE. I know. And they're everywhere. They're everywhere. An old school wrestling move that you want to see. I love the neck breaker. I love. A, I mean, you still see neck breakers. You know, plenty. I like that's more of an old school move than anything now. Pressure to the ears. <laughs> Austin Aries used to do it. <laughs> yeah, he was good at that. Yeah, and it looks like it really hurts too. Yeah, but no one uh, really. Apart from him, I don't really think anybody does it a whole lot these days. You don't see a lot of raking the back. No, you don't see a lot. I like the raking the back. Yeah, I do too. I like that. Yeah. Um. You don't see a lot of leg drops. No. Like to see more leg drops as like finishers. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, he dropped the leg. Why is it Hogan could do that and everybody marks out? But like these days, nobody would do the leg drop except for Hogan. Nia Jax uh, used to use the leg drop as a finisher. Oh yeah, she needs to bring that back. She needs to make that like her thing. Yeah. Again, boot and then leg drop. That's the finish. Boot and a leg drop. Boot off the ropes, leg drop. Yep. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, CM Punk finds it insulting. Find it insulting. If you controlled WWE and had the option to sign either Kenny Omega or Okada as the top guy in WWE for the next eight years, who would you choose assuming the other man would never make it to the WWE? Ooh. Um, CM Punk finds it insulting. He would choose Okada because he is still only 29 years old. I would go with Kenny Omega. And it's because... I'm not. I think Kenny's just a better fit for the WWE. I think he's just a better fit for the WWE. You need to see him versus AJ, him versus Finn Balor. I'd choose Kenny Omega. As much as I want to say Okada, I think Okada being the king of New Japan is is totally perfect for him. Can I choose Naito? Can I say neither and choose Naito? Do you would you ever see a situation where Naito was used properly by the WWE? I don't know. I mean, they've treated uh, Nakamura like a huge star. Yeah, Nakamura has a transcendent presence, and I'm not saying Naito doesn't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure people who aren't familiar with Naito would understand Naito. He would need to run an he would need to run an NXT. Oh, Plus obviously. he's got LIJ. He's so I don't know. Again, he's the kind of guy who's so embedded in in New Japan. No, I know, but I'm just saying based solely on in ring ability and, and, and character work. Oh yeah, man, Naito's great. Give me Naito. He's the man. Give me Kota Bushi. I want some more second. second. Have you watched that man yet? Not yet. I'm oh that God, you're gonna. Oh, I can't. I that's I saw crazy. that spot on Twitter, and I saw the spot where he throws uh, Naito into the turnbuckle pad head first. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. And then oh. there was one other spot I saw where uh, didn't Ibushi uh, reverse uh, Destino into something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot what it was. Um, oh, I have I have my notes. I I took extensive notes on this. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, oh! I, I have here. Naito goes for Destino. Ibushi counters, throws him into the corner. Oh, that's what it was. Then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that corner throw was rough. Head first, right in the turnbuckle pad. I'll have to watch that again. That is that on our list of uh, uh, potential best, best match of the year. I, once I watch it, probably that's high. oh yeah, that's right. You haven't seen it yet. That is high up there for me, dude. God damn. Are we gonna have to do a top ten God list of just Kota Ibushi matches? Or at least like top 10 New Japan matches. Oh, yeah, I think that's a given at this point. We should do like our top 10 matches of the year should be like number 10, like whatever the best WWE match And then was. nine. No, we're going to do two separate lists. Top 10 New Japan oh, matches. Oh, I like it. Okay. Top 10 matches from everywhere else. Sounds good. Oh, <laughs> that's good. I like that. Top 10 New Japan matches and top 10 everywhere else, mm-hmm. including WWE. That's what it's going to be. Oh, I like it. That's good, man. That's good. Keep I know it's good. It's good. It's good stuff. Uh, Little Nate, first time patron. How long do you guys think Dolph Ziggler would need to be on the indies before he could viably return to WWE as a main event contender. I don't know if it's possible. It's an impossibility, dude. It's not it's not going to happen. I, let me ask you this. Could Cody Rhodes come back to the WWE as a main event contender? Uh in 3 2 to 3 years, yeah. I think he has to evolve a bit more as a performer. He has to have yeah. a, a, at least one dominant run as Ring of Honor champion. And be putting on spectacular matches. Yes, spectacular matches. Yes, 
He hasn't proven to me that he can do that yet. Uh, no, I agree. Yeah. So but that's I, a big if. No, it is, a, if. it is a huge if. But in terms of character work, absolutely. Yeah, he's great. He's if he fantastic. can match the quality of his character work in the ring, yeah. then there's a possibility. Charlie Seabach. What a great name. With the lack of depth of SmackDown tag teams and the recent breakup of American Alpha and Enzo and Cass, do you see a possible unification of the tag divisions allowing teams to compete on both brands, or do you guys think the current situation is fine? Thanks, friendos. Keep up the great Once work. Once the club moves over to SmackDown, all will be well. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Although I am bummed out they broke up Enzo and Cass. Yeah, it was just too soon. It was too soon. That's I think that's drag. all of them I liked. All right, you're on your own now. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Sean Holbert, do you think Baron Corbin will cash in Money in the Bank on Sunday? No, more likely SummerSlam. Especially if it's Cena Mahal for the title. Yeah. I don't even see, at this point, I don't think they would have Cena win, break Ric Flair's record, just to have him hold the title for like three minutes. Mm-hmm. If the plan is for Corbin to cash in at SummerSlam, it would be a situation similar to uh, WrestleMania 31. Where Mahal and Cena just beat each other up so much. Oh yeah. Towards yeah. the end, before pinfall. Oh yeah. Corbin comes in, just pins. Yeah, it could be interesting. Makes a triple threat. Makes match, a triple threat. Yeah. Pins one of them, wins the title. Yeah. And then after that, uh, you know, I guess you have a Corbin Cena feud or a Corbin Nakamura feud. And then that way, you know, they're already starting the Corbin Nakamura feud mm-hmm. in November Survivor Series. Have that be a title match. Nakamura wins the title, maybe. Daniel Hyatt, the weekly talk with the weekly talking smack dead. Uh, what are some shows, show ideas that could fill the void on the WWE network? He points out um, something akin to the Kevin Steen show, which apparently was a sit down interview with Kevin and a guest going over their past and current aspirations. I did not know he did that. No, I didn't know that either. Um, what's a what's a show? I, Legends I, with JBL, bring that back. <laughs> no man, something new, man. Uh, do the Sami Zayn Telestrator show. How about... Uh, where he breaks down the best matches of the week. Oh, that's good. That's really good. I like that a lot. Um, how about this? Steven Larson brings it to the table. What names are you taking, first of all? <laughs> uh, no, you replace uh, What's-His-Face and get, put us in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Good job, me. But except, yeah, we would just... we would. I don't know. That hot takes. Work. Yeah, hot, hot takes and hot cakes with Steven Larson. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, Steve Club, Mark, Robert Jacone. Hey, friendos. You guys have, to have the opportunity to create a structure like Hell in a Cell and the Punjabi prison. What kind of structure would you create and what would it be called? Man, oh, man. Um, I think there should be a cage. Yeah. That the, the ceiling slowly drops down. <laughs> oh, God. Are there spikes on the top? No, it's taking things too far. <laughs> That's too much. Okay. We, we almost saw Seth Rollins getting paled once on the episode of Raw. <laughs> yeah, that, that wasn't good. But just slowly the ceiling comes down. Okay. Um, uh, God, I don't know. I want to see like a... I, instead of like a, a, a house of horrors, I want like a Shoney's of horrors match where it's like in a, in an old, like rundown Shoney's, mm-hmm. but it's in Ackworth, Georgia. Yeah. And so it's like, you're having a match with somebody, but then Scott Steiner is there somewhere too, man. Slam anniversary. He looks so old. Oh yeah. I he, he was, he was so in on the joke though. That that made it actually really delightful. Okay. He can, look, he, the dude can still go in the ring. He just looks old. Yeah. Well, he is old. <laughs> he look, he reminds me of turbo in his last days. <laughs> Oh, my poor boy. I love um, dog. The bear Daniel Bryan wrestled. Um, he says, hey, friendos, I know wrestling is an extremely difficult thing to do, so it's hard to criticize sometimes, but one of my biggest pet peeves is when someone jumps off the top rope and doesn't even look like they're attempting a move. They just jump into a kick to the gut or a punch. Oh, I hate that too. Do you guys have any pet peeves when it comes to watching wrestling? I don't like people that fix their gear while they're trying to while they're supposed to be selling. Yeah, right. Because why would you care about your kick pads if uh, or your elbow pads? You just yeah. get dumped on the head. Yeah. yeah, totally. No, I'm with you on that one. Um, looking at the ref is my biggest pet peeve when they're counting. Yeah. You should be able to know what the freaking sequence is. You should be able to get the the cadence of the count. That's my biggest pet peeve. But I, I'm totally with them on people who go into the top rope or the second rope and just come down. <laughs> like they're not oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look like they're trying to execute anything. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see here. Oh, here we go. Illustrator of Silence, Carter Severn. Is it time to bring back more fast food reviews? No. When are we going to start our new channel? When is it's movie and music podcast? Movie, music, and fast food I'm reviews. I'm doing fast food reviews. I don't eat that crap anymore, man. I'm not going to waste a cheat day on some garbage angry whopper. Can you just? Well, it's just like a couple bites. Do you have to eat the whole thing? A couple bites. Then it's a waste of money. Oh no! But we're making money doing it. You think we're gonna recoup the cost of two hamburgers <laughs> on like a three-minute video? Yeah, no, it's not gonna happen. Are <laughs> we gonna recoup? We can't make fourteen dollars in a video, man. Two seven-dollar burgers. <laughs> Why did I go so expensive on the burger? <laughs> That's a super expensive burger, dude. What the fuck? We ain't going to Denny's every time. No. <laughs> oh, man. What else can we do on our new channel? Why not just one weekly? No, dude. We're not doing anything that isn't wrestling on this channel. I didn't say on this channel. Just on my one. channel? No, a separate channel. Okay. I said, what else are we going to have on our channel? I just said we just need to do one weekly like podcast about movies or music or something. Man, that's it. It's a channel. It needs to be robust. People are going to forget about we us. We have one robust channel that takes up like all of our time already. After like, after like, t- hey, why don't you come on my channel? We'll do it there. No. No, really? Your channel is your channel. Yeah, man. I'll put you on. My wife's on it. I'll put you on it too. My work wife and my regular wife. If, if, if it's us, it needs to be us. That's man, my outlook. So possessive. You're crazy. So when are we going to start a new channel? Um, Thursday. And what else are we going to have on there? Oh God. Watch Steve eat a $7 burger. That could be on your channel. Once a week. No, you watch me. Larson watches Steve. <laughs> Steve shirtless eating a $7 burger. Yeah, you can describe it to me and I can re- react in uh, revulsion as you describe. I'll just Skype. I'll Skype you in. The filth you're putting in your body. Skype you in. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the glorious broken sound wave. Sound wave. He was my favorite Transformer. Yeah, he was good. Uh, he was Starscream. From, I like that he, he claims that he has a great question. So we'll see if it is a great question. All right. From the past to the present, give a WrestleMania card with a dream match for it. One of my dream matches will be Shawn Michaels versus AJ Styles, Eddie Guerrero versus Kenny Omega. Just wanted to hear your guys' thoughts. A, is that a great question? It's not bad. I'm going to say yes because he's a patron and we needed we need the money. <laughs> oh man. What's like what's and somebody else asked, I forgot or it was. Somebody else asked. Uh dream match anytime. I'm going to say Stone Cold versus CM Punk. Yeah. I'm going to say and then or also Macho Man versus CM Punk. Pre-show, George Hackenschmidt versus Aiden English. Good. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say Macho Man versus Seth Rollins. Oh, that's good. Who you're the Steamboat Mark nowadays? Oh yeah, Steamboat. Who would he versus, take on? Ooh. <laughs> AJ Styles. Oh, that's a good that's one. A seven star match right there. Oh, that's an eight star match. I'm gonna say. Speaking of eight star matches, I'm gonna go with the Young Bucks versus uh, the Colossal Kongs versus the Revival. <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, that's good. All right, it's time for trivia. Yeah. Time for the second greatest trivia game in history. This is the one we didn't come up with. All right. Let's start with Attitude Era. I will ask first. What former MMA competitor did Steve Blackman face in the Lion's Den weapons match at SummerSlam 99? Uh, What former MMA competitor? Yeah, Lion's Den weapons match. That's got to be Shamrock. Yeah. That was the name of his his, uh, school was the Lion's Den. Oh, oh, that I didn't know. (laughs) I thought it might have been Dan Severn. Oh, that's what that's what the Lions Den comes from. Yeah, no, that was Dan Severn. No, what are we on? Um, Attitude. Yeah, what? Oh, Whoa. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Back Go up. Ahead. Son. Sorry, sorry, sorry. One. Who faced Hulk Hogan in a street fight at WrestleMania 19? Uh, Vince McMahon. Very good. Um, what brother tag team unified the WWE and WCW World Tag Team Championships at SummerSlam 2001? Oh, the Hardys. No, Undertaker and Kane. They're not actually brothers, though. Well, kayfabe they are. That's all that matters. The whoops. The whoops. Uh, what superstar entered WrestleMania 2000 as both the Intercontinental and European champion? Ooh. Kurt Angle. Very good. He also fathered Jason Jordan. Um, what NFL team did former world heavyweight champion Goldberg? The Atlanta Falcons. Correct. 
What diva was cousin to Hardcore and Crash Holly? Molly Holly. Very good. Moving uh, on to classic. Classic. What 1996 In Your House pay-per-view event had to be rescheduled for two days later because a power outage disrupted the event? What In Your House pay-per-view had in what year? 1991? 96. Jeez. Uh, shit. Did you know this one? I know reading about it. I wouldn't remember the name, though. Texas Tuesday. Beware of dog. Be- <laughs> what the fuck? I think it was HBK versus British Bulldog. Oh, ah, okay. Uh, another 1996 question. Ooh. You I mean you're going to get it? Who did Stone Cold defeat in the na- in the finals of the 96 King of the Ring tournament? Jake Roberts. That's right. What? Who defeated Hulk Hogan for the WWE Championship at the first King of the Ring pay per view event in 1993? Oh, uh, Yokozuna. Correct. Good job. What was the name of the tag team that featured members Rex, King, and Spot that held the World Tag Team Championship? Moon Dogs. Good job. Wow. Who teamed with Paul Roma to create the Power and Glory Tag Team? That's your last question. Power and Glory. So obviously this wasn't during the Paul Roma Four Horsemen years. No. The era. Um... Power. Glory. Uh, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndoff. No, they were pretty wonderful. (laughs) It was Hercules. (laughs) Hercules. Uh, Let's see here. What was the name of the million dollar man Ted DiBiase's bodyguard? Virgil. Very good. Clean sweep. Whoa! Choose three prizes. You sure you don't want to choose out of these? You get a lot of WCW options here. No, this is this. Okay. We'll put them in there. Then, put then them they're in there. available on the prize pool. Oh, my goodness. It's a good day for Larson today. <clears throat> yeah, man. No kidding. You're buying lunch. Okay. I had egos, man. I'm really hungry. Really? Yeah. I used to eat an entire box of those when I was in high school for <laughs> yeah, breakfast. On Friday when I got my surgery, yeah. came home, I had four Eggos. Three hours later, four more Eggos. Yeah, see. It was great. Molly Holly. <laughs> oh, there you go. Underwhelming. Let's make it a good one here. Yeah. Bradshaw. Yeah. Where's, there you go. Here's yeah, some WCW one. <laughs> Is it a flying Brian? No, oh, Luger. Luger. There you go. Look at it. He's, stra- he's straining right now to get this guy. Who's he got in the torture rack? Who is that? Is that like, who is that? Let me see. Is that beefcake? No, oh, he's got like a tattoo on his hand though. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Anyways, that's the show. That's the show. Thanks for tuning in. Patrons, stick around. And uh, we'll uh, talk some more movies and uh, comedy movies. And we'll figure out what we're going to do on our new channel, the bevy of videos we're going to produce. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.